I have worked with thousands of patients all over the world with severe plantar fasciitis. Honestly, I spend most of my time trying to educate patients on what not to do. There is so much misinformation out there regarding plantar fasciitis. Many people end up wasting weeks, months, and even years on outdated tactics that do not work. I'm not sure what it is about this condition, but no one seems to know how to treat it effectively. This might surprise you, but if you are wearing foot orthotics, a night splint, a walking boot, rolling your foot on a frozen water bottle, getting cortisone shots, wearing thick, cushiony shoes like Hoka's or Brooks, you are sabotaging your plantar fasciitis recovery. I see these treatment applications again and again, and they all fail because they are either ineffective or short-term band-aids and do not produce lasting results. In this video, I want to share with you the seven big lies about plantar fasciitis and how they are undermining your recovery. And later in the video, I will share with you what does work and how to address the underlying cause. So stick with me to the end. I'm Dr. Angela and I'm the plantar fasciitis doc and I'm all about helping you resolve plantar fasciitis at home. Now, let's get into it. The first big lie is that you need a pair of Hoka's, New Balance, Brooks, or Asics with thick cushiony soles and built-in arch supports to fix your plantar fasciitis. I'm sorry to tell you this because I know how expensive they are, but if you are wearing a pair of these shoes, they are actually contributing to your plantar fasciitis pain. Here's why. All of these brands have a narrow toe box and an elevation of the heel as well as toe spring. This footwear prevents your feet from functioning normally. When we walk and run, our feet and toes should naturally spread and splay. When we are cramming our toes into footwear with narrow toe boxes, it hinders our normal toe splay and weakens our arch muscles over time. The intrinsic muscles of our foot will basically shut down and you, your foot will lose its ability to absorb shock. Wearing footwear that narrows at the toe is actually the number one cause of plantar fasciitis. Also, elevation of the heel places excessive stress on our forefoot because of the downward angle, and it also causes a chronic shortening of our heel cord, which is our calf muscle and Achilles tendon. So this is why so many people have short, tight calf muscles. It's because of your shoes. Zero drop is the term used to describe a completely flat shoe from heel to toe. When a shoe has zero drop, it distributes your body weight evenly across the foot and encourages natural arch support. Toe spring is an upward angle of the toe of the shoe. This places your foot in an unnatural position and creates mechanical problems in our feet and lower legs. We need footwear that supports the natural shape of our feet. A few examples of functional footwear that I recommend for plantar fasciitis are ultras, zero shoes, flux footwear, and Vivo Barefoot, and I'll link these in the description. The second big lie is that you need foot orthotics to support your arches. Wearing foot orthotics is one of the biggest roadblocks in healing plantar fasciitis. Orthotics weaken your feet over time. Our feet are inherently strong and do not need this type of support long term. A practitioner would never put a cast on a broken arm and re recommend that you wear it for life. Once the tissues and bones have healed, you remove the cast and begin to strengthen the muscles. However, with foot orthotics, there is a neglect to implement an expiration date. Using an er external device like an orthotic is a temporary solution. The third big lie is that night splints will resolve your morning foot pain. Night splints have become increasingly popular for the treatment of plantar fasciitis. Many foot practitioners will prescribe night splints to diminish your morning foot pain. And since that excruciating pain with the first steps in the morning is one of the most distinctive features of plantar fasciitis, the concept seems like a good idea. However, mechanically, it just doesn't make sense. Your foot 
foot is kept in this extended deep stretch for six to eight hours that you are sleeping, this type of prolonged stretch called static stretching is where you're, you hold the stretch for longer than 30 to 60 seconds. Unfortunately, static stretching has been shown to be virtually ineffective for this condition. Because plantar fasciitis is more closely related to a tendinopathy and a repetitive strain and less of an inflammatory disorder, the most effective treatments involve active or dynamic stretching versus static or prolonged stretching. So my conclusion is that night splints may decrease pain in the short term or diminish pain in the morning, but this application does not have a significant effect on prevention or recurrence long term. So you can stop wrestling with that thing all night. The fourth big lie is that plantar fasciitis is an inflammatory condition. If you've had plantar fasciitis for longer than a couple of weeks or even a couple of months, inflammation is no longer your problem. The latest research shows that the main cause is restricted blood flow and degeneration of the collagen fibers in the plantar fascia. The reason these findings are so important is because if you're attempting to manage your symptoms with icing your foot, taking anti-inflammatories, getting cortisone shots, and resting from all activities, then you are not treating the real cause. Furthermore, anti-inflammatories and ice restrict movement and actually interrupts the healing process. I can understand why you'd want to try these measures to reduce pain, but focusing on the underlying cause is what brings true correction. The fifth big lie is that resting helps heal your foot. We just mentioned that plantar fasciitis is not an inflammatory condition. However, many patients have been instructed to rest and take a few weeks off from all activities. You've been told to stop running, stop walking, stop playing tennis or pickleball, or whatever it is that you do. This news can be incredibly painful to hear, especially if you're training for a race or a marathon. So you may take the time off, but when you return to your favorite activity, the same same problem comes back. This pattern is a classic presentation of plantar fasciitis. If you want to fix the problem, you need a rehab plan involving targeted exercises and mobility protocols to rebuild strength to your foot and calf and peroneal muscles. Complete rest will not correct the deficiencies in your feet and you will continue to have recurring pain. Now, there is a brief period where rest can be helpful and even necessary for healing. However, in most cases, starting a strengthening program quickly is the key. The sixth big lie is to never walk barefoot. This is another common myth. I know most of you have been told to avoid barefoot walking if you have foot pain, but this is one of the healthiest things you can do for your feet, and it naturally strengthens your foot core. Many studies have shown that barefoot cultures have little to no foot problems and have significantly straighter and more aligned toes. Now, it can take some time to train your feet to enjoy barefoot walking. You'll need to slowly begin to introduce your feet to this new concept. Try to make a conscious effort to take your shoes off when you're at your desk or just walking around the house. Because your feet can be tender, weak, and accustomed to heavy cushioning, and orthotics, you will need to start slowly with only a few minutes a day. I recommend starting with going barefoot for 10 minutes each day, then increasing time each week. Also, another way to naturally strengthen your feet is to wear toe spacers. Toe spacers help to stretch and realign your toes from the damaging effects of narrow toe shoes. They also help to broaden the base of your feet, which allows you to use your foot core more optimally and increases that much needed circulation and blood flow back to your feet. The seventh big lie is that stretching will fix all your problems. Stretching your calf muscles and stretching the plantar fascia, which is the bottom of the foot, is one of the most 
most common recommendations for plantar fasciitis. And it is true that inflexibility in these areas contributes to your problem. However, stretching without addressing the primary cause of your inflexibility will be virtually ineffective. This one thing that would allow us total freedom in movement is addressing our fascial system. Fascia is the connective tissue that wraps and surrounds every single thing inside our body. Most of us, when we feel tightness in our muscles, our first inclination is to stretch. But what you are really feeling is restrictions of your fascia. And you must release the fascia first before stretching will be effective. If this knot represents an area of restricted fascia, can't you see how this would prevent you from getting an efficient stretch? I offer detailed instructions on how to release fascial adhesions with a fascial release tool in my free guide. The link is in the description. So I'm sure some of this information is completely opposite of everything you have heard or read about plantar fasciitis. And I believe that's why people suffer for so long. My goal is to provide you with an alternative perspective to most of the content out there on plantar fasciitis. If you want to know what methods do work, be sure you download my free guide where I share the exact steps to re resolve plantar fasciitis at home. Also, be sure you watch my next video on more strategies to resolve plantar fasciitis.